At MDS uh, this year, we have a couple of posters that really uh, take a look at this emerging intermediate class of therapies that are probably used earlier once oral therapies, um, on-demand therapies, adjusting levodopa and adding adjunctive medications don't give patients significant improvement uh, or enough improvement to, to live their daily lives fully. And these intermediate group of therapies involve subcutaneous infusions. Uh, one poster we presented looked at subcutaneous infusion of apomorphine and reported the first uh, experience in the United States of using the su apomorphine subcutaneous infusion and found that it had a very early onset of efficacy, uh, that it had demonstrated tolerability and with, with low rate of discontinuations and that many patients made it not only through the uh, initial phase but, but over an uh, extended maintenance phase. Uh, so it was very encouraging uh, to, to see the experience that's been uh, seen in Europe uh, replicated uh, to a large part in, in the United States experience uh, and the efficacy endpoints, although they were open label, uh, really mimicked what was seen in the double blind uh, placebo controlled randomized Toledo trial with apomorphine subcutaneous infusion uh, in, in, the, in, in Europe. In another uh, poster, we were able to look at infusion site reactions using phospholipidopa, phoscarbidopa uh, subcutaneous infusion, and we're able to really identify that these don't uh, uh, very commonly result in discontinuations, are often uh, mild or moderate, uh, not serious and, and not severe, and really begin to look at what does it mean when someone gets a subcutaneous infusion, uh, whether it's apomorphine or, or whether it's uh, uh, levodopa or phospholipidopa? Uh, what are nodules and, and what is uh, erythema and what is inflammation and, and do infections uh, occur commonly or not? And it really has uh, emerged that subcutaneous infusions are well tolerated by the skin, uh, beneath the skin. Uh, these are delivered by catheters, very tiny catheters, about 10 to 13 millimeters that go through the dermis and deliver these therapies just beneath the skin. They rise up and go into the uh, blood vessels. And if some fluid remains there, it has to be uh, taken away by the immune system. And some people have a hyperimmune reaction. They may get some irritation or erythema. Sometimes it may get inflammation and expand. Uh, but we don't usually think these are infected. And indeed, in all the uh, three different emerging subcutaneous infusions, infections, uh, cultured infections, were, were never really uh, commonly seen at all. Uh, there were uh, coded infections that were presumed infections. Uh, they may have received empiric antibiotics, uh, but they probably represented, I think in, in our experience, inflammation that, that can be hard to discern from infection. But I think uh, the, the, the take home message for clinicians when these become available is if you see something that looks like it's red or inflamed, you can watch it for a couple of days and often they will improve and resolve spontaneously if they persist or increase and you think it could be an infection, try to culture it and if not, empiric antibiotics can be done. But most people will have spontaneous resolution because it's mainly inflammation and, and not infection.